Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Fantasy Hockey Picks and Bets presented by Prize Picks right here on the Mayo Media Network. I'm your host, Chris Meany. Thanks, as always, for taking the time to hang out. Riding solo here with you today because just the one game in the NHL, the Boston Bruins and the New York Islanders. The Islanders can close things out here tonight in Game 6 as they are up three games to two. And you know they have this slight advantage being at home because Nassau Coliseum has been absolutely lit with each playoff game. So it is going to be rocking there tonight. The Islanders, I'm sure, going to come out with a lot of jump, but I'd imagine the Bruins do as well. And they have controlled this series at 5-on-5 five five from a shot attempt standpoint, from scoring chances, high danger chances, goals really in their advantage at 5-on-5 five five in this series as well. But special teams has been the difference, and certainly goaltending has been as well. Semyon Varlamov has been fantastic. Tuka Rask needs to step up. I don't even know at the time of recording if Tuka Rask is going to go. I would imagine he is. There's been some reports that he isn't 100%. I'm assuming that he goes the total here at 5. I like the over anyways. I think the Bruins are absolutely going to bring it from a shot prop standpoint, from a shot attempt standpoint. So if you are just new to this show, please rate, review, subscribe, smash that like button. You have a comment there. Leave it there in the YouTube section. I'll circle back as always before a puck drop and help you out if you have any questions. If you are subscribed to the Mayo Media Network, you're going to get the content right away. And as you know, we talk about prize picks quite often. I mean, the show is sponsored by prize picks and you can mix and match across all the sports that you love. NBA playoffs happening right now, golf around the corner this weekend, as well as just a ton of games around the diamond in major league baseball. So if you're subscribed to the Mayo media network, you know, there's tons of prize picks content on this network and you can mix and match across all the sports that you love. If you follow the link, Inside the description of this video, a 100% first deposit match when you use the promo code. So check out prizepicks.com. And there's a few that certainly stand out to me. There's also some NFL props, by the way, on there, like Michael Thomas over five and a half touchdowns. Julio Jones' yardage is really, really low. Even still, as a member of the Titans, it's up there. So check out prizepicks.com. And like I said, you can just mix and match across all the sports. But if you have a couple plays tonight and you have a long, you know, uh, Michael Thomas over five and a half touchdowns, you're not going to see that cash for quite some time. But there are certainly a hockey, a couple hockey props that stand out to me. And from a shot prop standpoint, I do think that this game goes over the five. But the shot attempts, especially from the perfection line with Patrice Bergeron, David Pasternak, and, and Brad Marchand, they've just been there every single game, every game. So Pasternak is at four, and Patrice Bergeron's at three. And there's a couple others that I'd like. But those two Boston guys, I think they bring it, right? At least four shots in nine of the ten playoff games for Pasternak. He's cleared four in five games. He had five shots in his last contest. He's got five goals and eight points and 23 shots on goal in this series. Overall in the playoffs, 96 shot attempts for Pasta. That's number two behind Dougie Hamilton. His 52 shots just behind Dougie Hamilton as well. He's got seven goals. It's it's third in the playoffs. Nate McKinnon and Braden Point. How about Braden Point? I mean, I think the guy's got 40 points in his last 30 playoff games. He's been crazy. But Pasta's been scoring. He's been shooting. And in this series alone, 45 shot attempts and 23 shots. Nobody has more on both sides. As for Patrice Bergeron, he's at three, 21 shots in five games, five in his last game, at least three in seven of his last nine playoff games. You got to remember game one, he was very, very quiet. 42 shots in the playoffs here, 75 shot attempts, both marks top five in this series, 26 shot attempts and 21 shots. So that line, as we talk about this throughout the video, they've been really good. They, they've, they've owned the play. They've owned the high danger chances, the scoring chances and all of the shot attempts they really have owned. But if you're looking for some more action here. I got it. Jordan Eberle's at 2.5 shots. He's got 15 shots in his last four, 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 three, and four. He's got points in back-to-back -back games. He's got five points in as many games in this series. He leads the Islanders with 21 attempts and 15 shots on goal. Then there's the save prop here for Semyon Varlamov at 31.5. It's just strictly too low. Like the Bruins are going to bring it tonight. I can almost guarantee that it's going to happen from the top line because of what they've done already through five games in this series. But for Varlamov, he's had at least 39 saves in three of his past four games. So I think he cruises over this number. If I had to rank him, it'd be Pasta, Varlamov, Bergeron, Eberle. And then Matthew Barzell sitting there at three fantasy points. As we'll talk about in this series, I was giving it to him, I think, in game one or two, that he, I needed to see more from him. 
the last four games, he's been unbelievable. He's got goals in three straight, points in four straight. He's been really good, and he's been shooting the puck as well. So I like the over on Matthew Barzell. Check out pricepicks.com. Again, follow the link inside the description of this video. So let's get after today. Um, you know, from a betting standpoint, Boston here, road favorites, minus 135. They've been favorites in every single game, so Vegas has liked them quite a bit. The Islanders, plus 120 at home. It's I can get behind the Islanders' puck line here. The total at five, I mentioned I like the over. I just think Boston, I really do think that they bring it tonight and they find a way to force game seven. In the Islanders, a lot of people counting them out, myself included. I counted them out in round one. I counted them out here in this series. I had Boston in seven. I'm sticking to that Boston in seven. But this is going to, it's not going to be easy for the Bruins as, you know, the Islanders were one of the better home teams in the entire league. They get that matchup that they want at home. I talked about it on this show before. John Gabriel Pajot, Barry Trotz has a lot of trust in him, a lot of faith in him. He ended up playing on the second line for most of the 5-5 five and five play for the Islanders in Game 5 with Josh Bailey and Anthony Bolivier. So he kind of took Brock Nelson's spot. And he's been matched up against Bergeron. He was matched up against Crosby at home. He's going to be matched up tonight against Bergeron. It's still a battle that I think the perfection line will win, but a lot of credit goes to John Gabriel Pajot, really, and what he's done defensively and chipping in offensively here. It's going to be a tough Tough game for the Bruins to go into Nassau. It's going to be a, a, a just an electric atmosphere there. It's going to be very important for them to get the first goal. But uh, just, again, hammering home these points. And we can't look at it too much because the Islanders hold the lead in the series, 3-2. So we can't sit here and say that, you know, from an analytical standpoint, it's been all Boston and it's going to be all Boston again tonight and they're going to win the series. But just to put these statistics out there for you and you can make your own decision. 5-5 five and five in this series. Boston, 70 more shot attempts. 70. 44 more shots. A 12.21 expected goals for. This all according to natural stat trick. The Islanders, 8.58. The high danger chances, plus 12 for Boston. Plus 23 for the Bruins for the scoring chances. The 92 save percentage at 5-5. Five and five. Boston, the Islanders, 93. Where it's different is the high danger save percentages. For the Islanders, it's 90 for Varlamov. And 83% for, or 0.83 for... Um, Jukaras, the goals at 5-5, five and five, Boston has in the edge, 2 nothing. So as I said off the top, it's been special teams. Bruce Cassidy came out and said his whatever he said, um, calling out the refs, he got fined. I, I kind of agree with him. Some of the calls have been bogus, like some of the high sticks, it's all subjective, and it's not getting called the same way on the other side. So the refs have, have missed a couple high sticks on the Islanders' side, but they've, they've caught them on the Bruins' side. This is just what happens in the playoffs. You want to see the refs put the whistles away and just let the two teams play and not be the difference in the series. Right? We had the rant after game one between the Avs and I think it was after game two between the Avs and the Golden Knights with Cam and that bogus call in overtime led to um, you know an overtime goal. And the Islanders are, are being opportunistic on, with their chances. You can see the high danger save percentage right there. The, the scoring chances, the high danger chances, it's all in favor of Boston, but the five, and, the five and four play for the power play time has been in favor of the Islanders are capitalizing on their opportunities. So it was a 5-4 win for the Islanders in Game 5. And the Bruins, they dominated that game as well. 34 more shot attempts at 5-5, five and five, 20 more shots. They had the edge in scoring chances and high danger chances. Again, Islanders are efficient with their chances. A 1.02 expected goals for at 5-5. Five and five, The Bruins 2.42. It was the first line, the perfection line. 18-7 the shot attempts, 9-2 the shots, 2-0 the goals, 7-5 the scoring chances. Even the second line with Krejci Hall and Craig Smith, 17-9 the shot attempts, 10-4 the shots, 2-0 goals, 7-3 scoring chances. The Islanders' best line at 5-5, five and five, if you can guess, you probably won't unless you watch the game and you're an Isles fan. It was Matt Martin, Casey Zizekas, and Cal Clutterbuck. The shot attempts, 7-10, not in favor of them. The shots, 3-0 in favor of them. The scoring chances, 2-1. They were the they were just one of two lines to have the, an edge in scoring chances. The other was John Gabriel Pajot, Bolivier, and Bailey. But every other Islanders line at 5-5 five and five got outchanced, got outshot, and the shot attempts were not in their favor. The Barzell line in Game 4 was fantastic. It was awesome. They had all the metrics went their way. They owned the puck. They owned possession. And they owned all the high danger chances, scoring chances, and shots for. But the Bruins badly outplayed the Islanders in the last game. They just did not get the goaltending. And they just 
they were coming on strong the entire game, especially late in the third when they're down. And that's going to happen when a team is, you know, protecting the lead and just getting pucks out and, and deep. All those things that you hear all the time that people just shake their head at when it comes to hockey if you're an average fan. But it is partic- it's very true, especially in the playoffs. I just have to lean here with what I've seen from the Bruins and the top lines. I think the top two lines will dominate here tonight. And I, I got to go with the Bruins. I'm, I'm leaning Boston. I don't even think it's not even that juiced, really. Boston at points in this series on the road have been minus 160, minus 165, minus 135. Best I'm seeing over at FTN at bets.com. Use that free parlay calculator. Use the free prop shop to get the best possible odds. You want to go Islanders in the puck line? I'm, I'm for that. Hey, you want to take the home dogs to close this out? Again, that's your call. They've been a really good team at home, but I think Boston forces seven here because of their top players. I think we're really going to see a, a strong showing from their top six, even the Krejci, Hall. Krejci and Hall combined for 10 shots and 10 shot attempts in the last game. At um, you know That was in all strengths, by the way, not just five and five, but it's those top two lines that I think are going to bring it tonight. And... I don't really have much else to say. Uh, from a prop shop standpoint, I, I like Pasternak, the over 3.5 I'm seeing. On uh, DK, it's fairly juiced. Uh, unfortunately, you can't you know parlay any of this, these props with just the one game, but use that free prop shop. You'll find some better odds for a pass that over 3.5. Bergeron's going to be at 3 or 3.5 in some spots. I like him as well. John Gabriel Pajot didn't do anything last game, but I still like him. I'm, I'm fine with going back to him, having the short memory, over 1.5 shots. He's been hitting. Last game was quiet for him. Eberle, 2.5. McAvoy, 1.5 if you see him. He's cleared He's cleared that in four of the five games in this series. Taylor Hall at 2.5. He had the five shots, as I mentioned, the last game. And then Matthew Barzell, who's been shooting quite a bit. Three, three, four, and four. He comes in with goals in three straight. Six points over a current four-game streak. So he's been solid as well. Now, you if I saw a question or a comment in the YouTube section in the last video that it was... The info that I was relaying was kind of confusing, so I'm trying to straighten that out for you right now. This is all I'm betting tonight. Boston in the over, Pasternak shot prop, Bergeron shot prop, John Gabriel Pajot shot prop, and McAvoy shot prop. Now, if I can see JPG, what JPG? JGP at 1.5, I'm going to take that. Same thing with McAvoy. Unless it's like minus 190, minus 195. But John Gabriel Pajo has been around minus 130, minus 135 for two shots. I'll jump on that all day. But if you're just playing one, it's Pasternak. Just the way that this guy is shooting the puck, was he set off the top, the four shots just seem like a lock. It's, it's a do-or-die game. It's a must-win situation here. He leads this series in goals. He's been shooting nonstop throughout these playoffs. So he's the safest guy. But Bergeron has been as well. It's the two guys. I think the sneaky play, if you're looking for just a guy who's going to have some plus money here tonight and you don't want to get involved with four shots, it would be Eberle or it would be Barzell. Both of those guys are plus money. And Marchand could be plus money at two and a half if you look around. From a DK standpoint, I put together a couple of lineups here this morning, just three different lineups. Uh, My captains are just, it's going to be limited. It's going to be Pasternak, Varlamov, or Marchand. Like, I tried to fit in Bergeron in there. There's no way I'm not playing Pasternak tonight. I'm just playing him. There's no way I'm... I'd have to play five-plus lineups, and even then, I would have to stack the second line in Boston with Hall Hall and Krejci, Smith, or I would just go all in on the Islanders and just avoid pass altogether. But the lineups that I put together, Pasternak and Varlamov have been my captains. And like, for Varlamov, we mentioned off the top as well, is just the shot. It's the shots. He's going to see 40-plus shots tonight. 39-plus saves in three of his last four. So you can put together a lineup here with Pasternak, Marchand, Hall, Smith. Get a piece of the two. Grizzlick, Sezikis. Sezikis is my value play here tonight at 3K. I, I'm going to probably put him in in almost every lineup. I mentioned they were the best line at 5-5 five and five the last game. He's had a pretty good series. That line has has held their own. They're, they're a tough line to play against, and you know most times they actually control possession. So that's kind of where I'm leaning with the other one. For the Varlamov captain, I still think I'd play Pashnak on that in that lineup, but it allows you to maybe just be different away from, from Boston and go with Barzell and Eberle, or maybe Sezikis and Paul Mary. You know, Paul Mary at times playing with uh, Barzell and Eberle. It's not always 
Komarov on there. I mean, I think he only had like 11 minutes the last game. And then the other way would be to, to come off Varlamov and Pasternak. Those are the two captains that I like the most, but Bergeron in there with Pasta, with McAvoy, who's playing a ton of ice time. Like, if you can find a way to get McAvoy in there as opposed to Grizzlick, I mean, that's huge. He's just playing so much, blocking shots, shooting the puck. Um, and then Smith in there, Sezikis, and Eberle. But Varlamov or Pasternak, those are the two for me, for the captains. I think we'll see um, a ton of shots from that top line and then a ton of saves. So there are a couple other props on the way out if you're looking for plus money. Patrice Bergeron we hit in the last game, plus 70 for an assist. I've been playing him every single day over at FTN, and I know he hasn't hit a ton. Uh, he's been scoring more so than dishing out apples, but plus 155 for an assist. And then Matthew Barzell is plus 150 for an assist, minus 139 for a point. That's the biggest fear that I have in the Bruins here tonight is their goaltending. Is it going to be Swayman between the pipes? I mean, he's been good when he was starting, but that's a drop-off from Rask. I think it is going to be Rask. He's clearly not 100%. He needs to have his best effort here tonight for Boston to advance, and that's why I'd lean with the over. Varlamov has been so good. I think the Bruins score three, at least three. And the Isles, the Isles probably score a couple as well. So right at that number, maybe a push, but five, I got to take the over. Got to take the over on the five. Um, that's it for me. Just to recap here, Boston in the over, Bergeron, Barcel, uh, plus money for assists, Pasternak over the three and a half shot attempts, Bergeron over three or three and a half, John Gabriel Paggio over 1.5, McAvoy over 1.5 as well. And, you know, if you are looking for more, I would lean. You just then you get into the other aisles in there. You get into Eberle and you get into Barzell. All right, I've rambled long enough. Thanks as always for taking the time to hang out. Again, follow the link inside the description of this video to get that 100% first deposit match over at PrizePicks.com. Not sure if Cam and I will be around on Friday. We need uh, this series to go the distance. And we would need um, Vegas and Colorado to go the distance for Saturday so we can touch on both of those as the Canadians sit and wait for the winner of Colorado and Vegas. What is going on? Have a good one. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.